This screencast will try to explain what happens with asymmetric loading on a propeller blade. Here we have an aircraft flying straight and level, and here's the propeller hub. We have one blade coming out at us at the screen, and one going back into the screen opposite us. There's the plane of rotation of the propeller, and there's the direction of travel of the upward going blade, and here's the direction of travel of the down going blade. Let's assume that the blade is moving with velocity of 250 meters per second. Let's also assume the aircraft has an airspeed of 44 meters per second, and that the blade angle is 12 degrees. Reproducing this over on the right hand side, there's my velocity in the plane of rotation due to the, the velocity of, of the blade. There is the vector due to our airspeed. And there is my resultant airflow. And we can calculate that to 253 meters per second. We know that the blade angle is 12 degrees. And using a simple trigonometric function, we can calculate that this angle theta is 10. So if it's 10 from here to here, and 12 degrees from here to here, that means that angle, the angle of attack, is equal to 2 degrees. Now let's assume the aircraft has pitched up 20 degrees. The propeller hub would now be in that plane, and our plane of rotation has moved from the vertical position to this position, 20 degrees offset. The blade angle is still 12 degrees, and the angle between the chord line and the vertical axis is 12 plus 20, which is 32 degrees. Reproducing this over here on the right hand side, there's the chord line, there's our airspeed vector, there's our velocity in the plane of rotation, and that's offset by 20 degrees. That will give us a relative airflow of 268 meters per second. So the airflow has increase from 253 to 268 meters per second. I can split this vector here into its vertical and horizontal components and that allows me to calculate this angle here which works out to be 29 degrees. But we've already seen that the angle between the chord line and the vertical plane so the chord line and the vertical plane was 32 degrees that means if that's 32, this is 29, our angle of attack must be 3 degrees. So the downward moving blade will have a greater angle of attack, and hence greater thrust. And furthermore, the relative layer flow over the blade also increases, and this will also increase the thrust. Now if we look at the downward moving blade, here it is uh, reproduced on the right hand side. The airflow is still at 44 meters per second. We now have a downward moving uh, vector of 250 meters per second. And that would give us a relative airflow of 238 meters per second. So the relative airflow over the blade on the upward moving blade has reduced from 253 down to 238 meters per second. And that can be explained because this vector here can be broken down into its horizontal and vertical components. And this has a horizontal component of 85 meters per second. But the airspeed vector is 44 meters per second in this direction. So the difference between 44 and 85 is 41 meters per second. So it's this uh, difference is causing the re reduction in the relative airflow over the, the blade. So from a right-handed triangle, if that's 20 degrees, that's 90 degrees, then this angle here must be 70 to, the, to this plane here. And then using a trigonometric function, I can calculate that angle. And that works out to be 80 degrees. Therefore, this angle here is 10 degrees. But we've seen that the angle between the chord line and the uh, plane of rotation is 12 degrees. The so chord line and plane of rotation are 12 degrees. So if that's 10 then our angle of attack is 2 degrees. Hence we can say the upward moving blade will have a smaller airflow over it and consequently the amount of thrust produced by it will be smaller.